What's up, DeepConf? I'm here today to talk about this piece of web technology that I am super, super excited about. It's gonna to totally change the way that you build websites. They're called view transitions. What do they do? How do they work? Let's jump into it. If you don't know me, my name is Fred Schott. I'm one of the co-creators of the Astro Web Framework, one of the many web frameworks powered by Vite. Ding! And I've been working on this project for a while now, and we just recently had our Astro 3.0 launch, which featured view transitions as a headline feature. So I want to talk about what they are and why we're so excited about it on the Astro team and how this is something that isn't even Astro specific. Anyone can take advantage of this new tech. It's in the browser. It's here. What is it? What does it mean? There's so much to explore here. I can't wait to jump into it. You might've seen this demo floating around last week, and this is a really, really great example of what is possible with view transitions. You might be watching this and thinking, oh, like I know the Spotify web app. I know this is some giant JavaScript app that's powering all these view transitions. This must be really heavy and really difficult to build. It must have taken them months. You might be surprised to learn that this is all server rendered HTML. This is not a big JavaScript app. This is essentially the browser hitting the server for HTML and the browser powering the transitions between cards, pages, fades, all with HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. This was a demo built by an Astro community member to showcase how powerful view transitions can be. And this did not take a team, <laughs> lots of weeks and months to build. This is one developer who did an amazing job, but it just shows the power of this API that's now in the web browser that you can take advantage of today to build stuff just like this with not a ton of work. You might've seen some of these other examples. We've been super excited about this tech. It's so beautiful when you demo it. It just shows how powerful the web can be. These are experiences that have been possible, but they've always taken a lot of effort to get right. Using user land JavaScript to power and animate. And we've had CSS animations in the past, but it was a lot of work to hook that up in a way that would be seamless from page to page. Something that traditionally has been a forced full page refresh or has needed a full JavaScript app to kind of take control of that. This new API totally changes that paradigm in a way that makes these kinds of experiences super, super easy to build. So this is just a taste of some of the stuff that our community has been building with view transitions, and it's completely blowing my mind. It is so, so cool. With view transitions in the browser, this is essentially one line, one line to implement everything you just saw before you. Okay, well, maybe not one line of HTML, at least not for the demos that you just saw on the previous slides. Those required a bit more work, but still way less than you'd think. Ultimately, this is a browser primitive. It's a low level API. So it's still on you to think through browser support, framework support, accessibility, and actually styling these things more than just the default fade you get out of the box with the browser. And that brings us to Astro. Astro is a web framework with the goal to make web development easier and simpler with a really modern developer experience and a performance story that's best in class in the JavaScript world today. And for Astro 3.0, our latest launch, we went full in on view transitions. And instead of convincing that we did it, I'm just gonna show you this quick video of my friend Theo trying out Astro view transitions in his personal site. I wanna try these view transitions. So let's do it. Add it inside any pages head element. Index, import, YOLO. Oh, that's really nice. Now I need to add it to everything. That's so good. I'm hyped. That looks so good. I'm like going to ship this. So we couldn't get down to one line, but we got it down to two. Essentially importing the view transition component in your project and then putting it somewhere on the page to enable it. Two lines of code get you that really, really clean fade transition by default with the ability to extend and do even more if you want, go into the lower level primitive, but still giving you a ton of safety faults around browser support, working in fallback browsers with a polyfill, accessibility so much built into this API, built into Astro and Astro 3.0. So all this is available in Astro 3. We're so excited with where this landed. If you wanna try out view transitions, there's no better framework in my mind, no better way to do that than with Astro today. So we'll get back to Astro in a little bit, but it's something that we are so excited about in terms of making this API super easy to use for developers. So stepping away from Astro, let's just talk about the tech, right? Why are we so excited? What is so cool about this? I mentioned view transitions are something that you've always been able to animate with JavaScript, but it was still on you to control that animation, to ship some JavaScript that could manage and orchestrate it for you. And here in this new API, we're essentially given a start view transition hook, where how it works is you essentially call this to start the transition. 
move around the elements on the page. So change what you want to see, the kind of final end state. And then when this is done running, the browser will see the before, see the after, and transition between the two for you, all essentially doing the heavy lifting for you. By default, you get that nice fade I mentioned. You can customize it more with CSS. But just the idea of the before and the after being, you know, two versions of the same element on the page fading or sliding or morphing, like the browser is doing all of that heavy lifting for you, which is just so, so cool. It just totally simplifies the implementation, the amount of JavaScript you need to run this, and it's all done for you by the browser. I don't have time to go deep into how this works in the browser, but I will show you a couple of examples of how you can style and control this, which do give a sense of how this low level CSS based selector pseudo element API works. Um, so this is an example from one of the Chrome uh, blog posts about this, and you can see how they're controlling the animation, changing it, drawing it out pretty painfully using these selectors, the old and the new view transition. Um, so you can see how with CSS, you can actually start to control this. This is a more advanced version of this, which is the actual kind of material UI fade and slide combo. So you can see how you can really go even further, creating keyframes, creating animations, cubic beziers. I mean, there's so much you can do here in terms of controlling this with CSS. So low level API, super powerful, a ton of control in what you can do. Keep an eye at that header. You see how it's kind of a part of the transition. We'll talk a little bit about making sure that you're scoping these animations to the right part of the page. As you start to do more advanced things like full page slides, you don't really necessarily want the whole page to come with you. So keep an eye out for that. We're going to come back to that in a sec. And the last thing I want to share, which is a little outside the scope of this, but just to really make sure, you know, as we talk about view transitions, one of the best use cases that we see is in the page transition. But you can think of this as an API that can be used for any part of the page, not just a full page refresh, full page navigation. So shout out to Adam Argyle. He's been doing a ton of really cool stuff on Twitter and showing these demos of not just thinking about this as a full page tool, but actually something that can simplify any animation on the page. So huge shout out to Adam. These things are really cool and definitely keeping us exploring what's possible in this API. Now you're probably wondering, Fred, what happened to that meta tag you showed us when you're trying to lie to us about the single line of code needed? Um, all of a sudden we're starting to talk about JavaScript. I know. This part of the API, the meta tag, which basically zero JavaScript page transitions, that's still in progress. That's actually not available in any browsers except Chrome Canary behind a flag. So it's important to know they're basically shipping this API in two different versions, the JavaScript API that we've been talking about and this one line zero JavaScript HTML and CSS only API, which is still in progress. So you can explore it, but it's not really available in, in any browsers mainstream today. This JavaScript API though is fairly well supported. Chrome and Edge have support today and Safari and Firefox have both signaled their support of this API. So. I would fully expect this to ship in all major, major browsers fairly soon. The other thing to think about is which part of your tech stack is going to support this or possibly get in your way. So if you're just using HTML, server rendered HTML, raw JavaScript, you're probably fine to use this today, right? There's nothing that could really get in your way on a, on a classic JavaScript HTML stack. Some frameworks though that you know take over the full application, they might get in your way, they might cause problems. So it's just good to know if the tech stack you're using today fully supports it. I've called out a couple here. Astro has native support and polyfills for older browsers. Svelte, HTMX, and Nuxt have all also built in native support into their frameworks today so that you have access to those native APIs or have something powered by the framework. So let's talk about Astro and why Astro is so excited about this, where other projects have been a bit more cautiously leaning into this and exploring it. Um, there's a couple things. It really all comes down to the architecture. Astro has this more traditional HTML-driven architecture, which gives us a ton of simplicity and performance that I mentioned at the top. But that means that we can't just rely on a ton of JavaScript to solve this in user land, where other more spa-heavy architectures might, so more JavaScript-focused. You can do everything with JavaScript, for better and for worse. We also aren't so old that we had to solve this 10 years ago, the way that Rails did with Turbo and TurboLynx. Don't quote me on the 10 years, but some projects have just solved this by shipping a extra layer of JavaScript onto a traditionally HTML-driven site. So GitHub, Rails, this is not new to the idea of actually trying to build this into client-side JavaScript on top of HTML. For us though, it really came down to not having that history, so not having that baggage of a user land solution, but also not having the full power of JavaScript with a JavaScript heavy SPA. And so instead of us building this ourselves and trying to work around the problem, we actually saw this API coming and realized it could be the answer to our prayers. This could turn Astro's biggest weakness, not having these really powerful animations into one of our biggest strengths, having animations, but the browser doing the heavy work for us, meaning we can focus on APIs, wrapping it, interfaces and really making it a simple experience without having to go and reinvent the wheel in client-side JavaScript. So this really comes into like where we are fully going in on this, right? Building it into Astro the framework. You can see in the 3.0 example to the left, 
we've built this into Astro. It's a part of Astro. Whereas other frameworks are still exploring what it means to give you access to the browser primitives, but not necessarily incorporating this into the framework, as you can see in this other framework example, unnamed framework X. This is not a moral judgment. Both of these are fine APIs for what they're trying to do, but really highlighting how much our goal is to build this into Astro, not necessarily just give you the browser API and then you go do it on your own. We're trying to give you a little bit more of a protected, good defaults on by default experience. To give you a quick demo of just how easy this is to use in Astro and how much you get out of the box, I just wanna show a couple of quick snippets and demos of what this looks like. So here's our control. This is just a basic website. Full page refreshes on every navigation. You can kind of see that happening in the browser, the, the loader, the, the full page being replaced on every click, the back button, full page again. This is a really just traditional out of the box Astro site. And what we already showed with Theo was these two different lines, the importing of the view transitions component, and then just placing it on any page or all your pages if you want it to happen everywhere in the HTML. Those two lines get you this really nice fade transition. So already what we've done is we've added polyfill. So this works in every browser, not just the ones that support the native API. And we've also given you a little bit of a snappier default transition. The fade the browser gives you, it kind of depends on what the browser is implementing. And in Chrome and others, we saw a much slower default navigation. So in Astro, we've taken that and replaced it with something a little snappier and consistent across every browser. So you can you know, know what your users are seeing across any browser that implements this. So you can see here, simple fade transition, two lines of code. Already this is feeling a lot better. If you want to control this animation and do something like a slide, we actually offer a couple out of the box based on what you might be looking for. So you can see the slide animation here. All you have to do is this one line change to that transition colon animate. That's an Astro directive that's telling Astro, hey, this should be animated with the slide animation, not the default fade. So you can see here, it slides and there's actually back support. That's not actually how the browser works by default, but we've given this really cool when you go back, you're actually gonna see it slide in the reverse direction, which is just less complexity for you to worry about because that doesn't come out of the box with these APIs by default. So you can control the animation as well using simple keywords for some out of the box animations that have already been designed for you. No messing with CSS yet. One thing I'll call out is that that header there, you can see that's still getting the fade, right? So we've scoped the slide down just to the content of the page. I think I mentioned that demo earlier. You can control where your animation happens. If you just want the slide to happen on one piece of the page, make sure you're giving it to that main content, not the top level body. However, you're still gonna see the browser do its thing with that default transition for the rest of your content. So in this next demo, we'll just show you how easy it is to add a transition animate none to the header. And that way, the header is actually just gonna get an instant, no animation, just instant replacement with a new HTML. I like this better because I think for nav, you don't really want animation. You want it to be pretty snappy and quick to show your intention to move. So in this case, I like this better, especially if you're doing something like a slide and you don't want the header moving all over the place. I find this to be just a really nice touch to show that the nav is just a, a part of the page without animation. And last but not least, this is one of the most powerful features that comes with the API that the browser gives us, which is the idea of morphing an element. So how it works is you essentially give an ID to the element on the old page and on the new page. And if you name it with a consistent uh, name across those two, the browser is gonna actually handle the morphing from old to new. So again, it takes that snapshot of the old content, morphs it into the new content, and very little of this had to be implemented by us or by yourself. This is all the browser doing that heavy lifting, as I mentioned earlier. You can see how this really seamlessly moves up the page, morphs back, really, really powerful stuff with just, again, essentially one or two lines of, of annotation to your HTML. So. This is something that's really cool. You can imagine doing this with images, parts of your page, going back to that Shopify demo. You can do essentially all of this with the couple of APIs I've showed you in the last couple of slides. There's fades, there's morphine, there's cards opening and growing and shrinking. There's just a ton of power with just the simple APIs I've showed you and a little bit of customization on top of it. Again, if you wanna go into these deeper APIs, you're totally free to do that. Astra sits on top of that and wraps them, but you still have total access to the CSS and the styling of an animation. So you can go and build your own. You're not limited to just what Astra gives you out of the box. I wanna talk about two Astra only features here that I think are really cool because they just show how much more powerful we can get as a level on top of this browser primitive. And the first is accessibility. So I actually found this really interesting. The browsers in implementing this did not really build anything in for accessibility. Like everything else on the web, they essentially see that as the developer's responsibility to build experiences that are accessible to their users. I find this really interesting because this is not how I would have expected this to behave by default, but I think their reasoning makes sense. Not all motion is inaccessible. Really subtle effects or things that don't really disturb the page layout can be considered accessible without having to be turned off if you have prefers reduced motion set in your browser. 
that makes sense. But this is where Astro comes in, where we want to build a good default for, for everybody. And for us, we really saw an opportunity to have accessibility baked in by default. So in Astro, our animations actually are turned off if your browser has the setting enabled. The idea is that by default, Astro is going to be accessible versus trying to be as flashy as possible for as many users as possible. We like that default a little bit better for our use case. I see why the primitive is much more kind of up to you to decide, but for Astro, this made a lot of sense for our use case and for our users to handle this. And you know, you still have full customization if you want, but a nice default that's more accessible by default is, is where we drew the line for Astro. This is one of my favorite features, and it's another thing that's only available in Astro today, which is the idea of taking an element and actually making it persist across transitions. So this isn't just a snapshot that's being morphed and then removed. This is actually an element that persists across the navigation so that you get its state persisted. It's everything about how it looks and feels. It essentially lives on from page to page, which wouldn't normally be possible when you're doing a full page refresh, a full page of HTML coming in. So this is a great example of this. You can imagine the Spotify example also, if it had an actual audio player, it'd be able to do this. This audio player on this demo is the same audio player throughout this experience. It is not a new piece of HTML that's being replaced. Astro is basically telling the, the front end browser code, hey, when that new page loads, make sure that we replace the old element with the new, or sorry, replace the new element with the old element. Keep that persistent audio player still playing. Whatever tunes you got, it's playing them. All just totally baked into Astro. Nothing that you need to hook up other than that. So if someone builds a YouTube demo, you can imagine the same thing. A video player, as you navigate, it can morph, it can shrink, but it's gonna persist across that page throughout the lifetime of your experience. So that's really cool. Not built into view transitions by default, but available in Astro. And bringing this all together, this is just a really cool demo that I'm just gonna let play because I think this just totally speaks to what happens when you bring all this together. The browser primitives, the Astro APIs, and some of those Astro only experiences like persistent UI and, and state that can persist across the experience. You can see here, this demo of an e-commerce site. It's got the page transitions obviously, but also that really cool chat widget you just saw get closed, persisting across page to page, not being cleared out as you navigate, having that API to persist an element. You can see state here, the user's profile, the shopping cart is being modified and updated. All this is what's now possible in Astro, thanks to some of these APIs and what you can now build with them. So when I mentioned that like we're totally changing how you can build with, with Astro and what you can build on the web, that's this is just like a, a sneak peek at what we're talking about and what view transitions unlock for web developers across any tech stack, not just Astro. So view transitions are super powerful and Astro's goal is to make this as easy as possible, checking these boxes for you so you don't have to think about or handle them yourself. Browser support, no matter what the browser supports, having a nice polyfill for older browsers, building it into the Astro language, making it accessible by default. You've got your snappy fade, you've got slides, you've got morphs, and you've got persistent transitions for elements that need to live on across pages. So please, please, please check this out. It's so cool. The browser API, the Astro APIs, whatever it is, this is something that we're only gonna see more of on the web building these animations responsibly, but also just totally making beautiful web experiences. I, I can't wait to see what the web builds with this and what y'all build with Astro, View Transitions, Veet, the whole ecosystem. It's never been a better time to jump in. So thank you, Veet, VeetConf, everything, Astro, check it out. I'm rambling, I'll just keep filling this time. Thank you all for listening and check out Astro if you wanna learn more. <laughs>